Yo, welcome Fronies to the first ever 100 tips video for Throne at Liberty. I have created this video based on the over 800 hours that I played over in Korea and I wanted to share my experiences, especially for the players that are just starting out with the game. Even though the game is amazing, it has lots of traps where you can fall into and I'm trying to prevent it so you can have a really nice playing experience. And I would like to make a deal with you guys. So if you learn something new in this video, you will have to subscribe. I have structured this guide in 12 pieces total and we will go over basically every piece of content that the game has to offer how to do it the best way how to do it the most efficient how to save resources we will go over pve we will go over pvp i really try to include every piece of information that is useful for someone that is learning the game and also there's going to be some tips that probably even surprise the veterans you can triple the value of the magic powder that you're getting from the blue items. If you fully trade an item, for example, with garbage stats like that one here that no one wants, so it's really cheap. And once the item is fully traded, you will upgrade it to plus four only. And then you will get 55 pieces of purple powder. If you're upgrading your gear, you want to make sure that the green gear gets upgraded to plus six. Then you transfer it into blue gear. The blue gear gets then upgraded to plus nine. Then you transfer into the purple gear purple gear also gets upgraded to plus nine and will then be transferred from tier one into tier two once that is available later do not rush purple gear a fully traded blue item is better than a plus six purple with like maybe one trade wait a while be patient and then upgrade to the purple one once it actually makes sense and you get a power spike from it and not a deduction the only exception to this is your main weapon where you do want to go and get all of those tokens from the level 50 dungeons asap so you can then craft the weapon of your choice with the dimensional essence salvation as you're leveling in the game and later also you will have long ways where you actually have to walk to places to get there so there's quite some travel time but you can actually use that time efficiently and upgrade while you're doing this as you see right here i was walking the whole time while i was doing that just by pressing w when you are upgrading your focus should always lay on your main weapon because this is how other troops will judge who they're taking in the party who they're taking with to dungeons people sometimes even require you to link your weapon and this is also what's being visible in your character card don't be afraid to dissolve purple oak stones that you're getting as rewards early on for blue ones so you can keep upgrading your gear you will get a power spike that way and even if accidentally dissolve too many you can later just recraft it instead of clicking all items individually when you want to dissolve it's actually better to go to the bottom right here and then you can select by rarity what you want you see what you get and then you can just with shift deselect what you don't want you also have the full stacks of everything instantly available rate of the purple weapons is quite low but you will have 100 drop rate at our sponsor rogue energy with the 175 milligrams of caffeine and 400 milligrams of taurine it's fucking kicking with code pony you will save 10 percent off your next order and as always all your support will go towards funding a new editor for the channel so we can push out videos daily and not only twice a week now back to the video so if you actually want to get it quick to rush your main weapon it's better to do it via crafting rather than target farming one dungeon if you transfer a blue plus nine item into a, a purple one the purple one will go plus six the most expensive levels to do are actually seven eight nine it costs lots of soul and many growth stones there is a little trick where if you are saving that up and you manually level the epic item to level 6.27 and you then transfer the blue plus nine item into it it will instantly get plus nine and you're saving a bunch of soul and stones and you're putting for example a blue weapon into a purple weapon the blessing of the blue weapon will continue over to the new purple one so this means that you can actually stack that blessing with for example cheap trades from the auction house and you have to do the math individually for every piece but this is sometimes way cheaper than actually going there and buying all the purple ones later on if you want to craft or upgrade any item Items, you mostly have to unequip them so for example you see here steel fishing rod is not available so upgrade it to the blue one unequip it and now it's available 
extracting good trades from purple with the trade extraction stone is the best way to earn lucent as a free to play player because you can then sell those trades in the auction house trade unlock stones are hard to come by so use them only for the slots that are the most expensive in the auction house set an alarm so you always know when your army toys finish the expedition so you can send them out again the value you get from the expedition is really good when you are sending out your army toys you want to make sure that the element is fitting so here you see i have the water so i will send the water army toys right there for a bonus at daybreak shore at the expedition you can actually get the purple cracking fission rod out of there so i would recommend running daybreak shore non-stop until you get that and then continue Bro three leaves you should always have up running for your army toys so it can heal you because they are really cheap and can be purchased at every sundries merchant expeditions can be cancelled at no penalty and no cost if you for example want to change the location or accidentally took the wrong army toy army toys are not only good to heal you and collect your loot they are also a collectible so the more you get the more values you are unlocking here for the amount effect you will see especially valuable is like stuff like solo and bonus abyssal contract token efficiency so collecting as many army toys as possible is actually really nice because you get a bunch of resources from it another way to get bonus stats out of army toys is the paul synergy where you will see that similar army toys like for example the forest runs right here once you complete a pack of them you will also get bonus effect and here really good bonuses are for example the mastery bonus and the item chance because it takes quite a while to get the weapon mastery to max and of course more item drops now everyone is loving that you are leveling the fastest by following the purple quest line and only doing blue quests that are almost close to your lane if you ever run in a dead end where you do not have enough experience at the moment to unlock the next step in the main story quest line then you can also go to other waystones on the map like this one right here for example and once you uncover it you unlock more blue quests another option would be you are then starting to do some contract but it's actually more wise to keep as many of your contract until level 50 where you're then getting the highest rewards for your contract attempt your dimensional contract tokens that you need for the dungeon runs they can actually be negative so they can go all the way up to negative 300 and you can use that to your advantage by squeezing in early during your leveling process a couple of dungeons that do not cost the full 300 like roaring temple or cave of desperation contracts have a limit of 60 but you can trick the game by for example when you do not have the time to do full 10 contracts on a day you only do one and instead of only getting one extra it will stack up to 69 sometimes this will help you to squeeze out a bit more if you're low on time if you need a team to run dungeons i would always recommend going to the party board because there you will see different groups different settings they will have different requirements to join it's fairly easy even though if you have no pre-mates to do a dungeon you will find a team here quite quickly another option would be party matchmaking where you can also choose a dungeon select your role if you want to be a tank a damage dealer or a healer you can go and this will then be running while you can do other content for example the map is quite big and especially in the early game you will have lots of quests popping up everywhere so it's actually nice if you are using the pin system by going right click on the map and setting the pins so for example it will be more easy to navigate where you want to go in which order so you can plan your pathing and save lots of time by walking efficiently use the pin system in game to mark locations of like certain players in the dungeons so for example you can get a rank one mark for the tank then one mark for the dps healer so everyone knows where to go at all times at the start of the server only join the open world events that also have a the blue quests available in your codec that way you will get double the reward if you're playing a new server and you're reaching level 50 and you get like a bit of base gear try to finish your tails tower all the way up to level 20 it does not require a lot of gear but you're getting lots of upgrade materials here as resources as you can see 
it's already purple stuff that you could also dissolve to make all your blue stuff plus nine like we already learned like it's really valuable and if you're stuck with any of the floors don't worry there will be a full guide with all 20 floors available soon on my channel if you want to spend your abyssal contract tokens and you go into the dungeons to farm make sure that you're target farming because not all the monsters here have the same loot so for example here this one is not dropping a blue belt yeah here i'm looking for the blue belt to get it fully traded and only kill those monsters don't waste any of your abyssal contract tokens on other monsters try to use it specifically for your need this will give you a way better power spike than the people that are randomly slaying and then get like lots of gear early on in a server start where they cannot value up their power spike you should always have your guild contracts activated therefore you go here to the content notification to the green tab with guild contract and then here all the contracts that your guild is currently running will be there and you're able to contribute like helping your guild you will also get some additional reward and if you have good guild leaders they will also make it that the contracts are in the areas that you're going to farm anyways or the majority of the people of the guild are farming when you are doing contract you always want to refresh after one choice of the selection and try to get as many of those precious blessing powers as possible that's the best value you can get here and i will accept that one i will refresh now oh, i got another one like you want to keep rolling and you don't want to take any other than that and if you have to take any other than, than that obviously you're taking weapon at the start of a server and then later on what you need there's one contract in particular where many people are getting stuck at and that is the token specialist because the because the map will actually draw you for example to an empty place where the quest would be starting but it's not here this quest is a community quest so if someone else has already started it the guy with the token and the bag is already walking so you can just go and look around here and you will see it somewhere and it will also if someone else completes the quest you will still be able to pick up the loot doing only one hit on a monster already qualifies for a quest completion value so if you are leveling in a group it's wise that everyone is doing a couple attacks of the monsters now you always want to get at least one auto attack off onto your friends monsters so they count better for each other whenever you have time in dungeons and you have to wait for your mates try to go and gather the materials that are in there they are also again found in the codex where you have to gather those materials for additional rewards so you can do two things at the same time when you are in areas with lots of aggro monsters you will have to make sure that you have a good stamina management if you want to go to safety with a hook you will for example need a couple of stamina to do the hook here when you are new to the game and you maybe haven't solved all of your mana issues yet it is a viable strategy to when you are running the dungeons to just die because you're respawning with full health and full mana and it's sometimes more efficient and gives you more dps than staying alive for like another five minutes in the clear but not having the ability to do any damage note though this does not work in the boss fight only in the previous clear you should always keep your inventory clear and organized and you should you can go and use the filters so you have access to the items that you need faster and down here you can also do different sorting mechanisms would also recommend to change the lists size to the smaller one so you can see more of your items at once to get to Zaradoma island you want to board the whale either at the starlight observatory or at the pure light tower then you have to ride the whale basically all the way till the end but don't worry in the time that you're spending on the whale you will be able to grind marins from ores that are even respawning multiple times once you are at the end you can jump off the whale and then just glide over and unlock the Zaradoma waypoint should always keep your eyes open for the fog on the map that is showcasing that a mystic globe is around you can open those with the mystic keys purchased at the contract coin merchant and they give valuable items for that you need for upgrading if you ever have trouble figuring out where to farm for certain items you can always click the items go on the little eye here where it says how to acquire and it will give you a list of where you can get those items another option is going on to questlog.gg and go to the database and just type the item that you want and then here in the bottom you will see an overview of everything where that item is being used at or where you can drop it from all the monsters all sorcerers etc if you're currently planning your build and you want to see what the trades if the items are good or not go onto the item go to the shield where it says trade list and check what trades are available for that item because it's not like that cloak always has the same trades 
as every other cloak, different items have different options of traits that can be on them. So you can not only evaluate if an item is good based on the stats that it has, it also needs to have the good traits that you need for your build. In the auction house, you can register 30 items and I highly recommend trying to keep that list full at all the times, even with trash items that you might think other people wouldn't even buy, because there's many people, especially whales, that buy almost any shit just to fill up the lithography book. The game is quite limited with storage space, so I would recommend to keep all the loot boxes that you're getting that splits up in multiple materials, keep them closed until you really need them, so you have more space. If it still happens that you run out of storage, you can also register some items that you need at a high price at the auction house. If it sells, well, then you're lucky because you got like a good value, and if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because you will not have to pay any like entry for the items in the auction house with Lucent, the Lucent will be deducted once it's sold. So you can use it as a temporary storage unit as well. If you are, for example, at a PvP world boss fight and you're doing some contribution and you die and you do not respawn and you let your corpse stay, your contribution will count while you're dead and you will get the reward. This way, if you have farmed the peace ones and you're going into the PvP ones, you can at least get like the minimum reward without having to do the PvP if this is not your style. When you're freshly leveling up, you will be accessing the leveling log right here. You can purchase a bonus one with Lucent, but it's not required. And one thing you can do in every area, whenever you see a mini boss, just go and kill it, because all mini bosses are in here. You do not even have to check what it gives. The mini boss kills are fairly quickly, and you will get some rewards just as you pass by. Weekly missions can give you access to really nice rewards, but there's one twist. In the weekly missions here, you will not be able to get all the rewards when you complete all of them. So basically, you want to go and complete one after the other, and once you have unlocked it and the value is good then you will get that reward and choose that one but then you cannot take any of the other rewards so always wait until the week is almost over check what you have um, completed then choose the most valuable reward make the servers more fair the game has a milestone system where the whole server always needs to unlock certain things you will find that in the milestone tab here and then you will see different tasks by participating in it you will get different values different rewards and all of that so i highly recommend to keep an eye on on that when you're new on the server to also see where you can first of help like the community but the other aspect is also where you can squeeze out some additional rewards for doing something that you would have done anyways the auction house is an essential factor in that game and therefore it's important to everything that you think is of value or that you need for your build to mark it as a favorite because if you mark it as a favorite it's really easy to see the current pricing and what is going on and even while you're leveling you're like walking a little because you have to do like it's only one quick glance with the favorites in the auction house and you can see if there is something worth buying if you can get a good deal really use that function um, you will save lots of lucent by checking regularly when we are talking about stats it's important to understand what diminishing returns means so in this game, if you are stacking almost any stat, it will not give you a flat 1% for each 10 points that you're stacking, even though it is basically saying that almost in the description for the skills. So here we are having an overview, so that means based on what they're saying, 1% per 10 points, you would imagine on first go that at 1000, we would have 100%, but actually at 1000, it's about 50%. It's also a game where stacking over the base 1000 is viable. You need to understand this graph. It's important for your character building. So when we are looking here at the example from evasion and hit, we can see it clearly. Evasion is a stat that is determining how high the chance is that if someone attacks you, the attack is evading and it actually deals zero damage. And hit on the other hand is the counterpart to that stat and that determines how high is the chance that your hit is going through the enemy's evasion. So basically if an enemy has lots of evasion, you want to stack lots of hit. And I also planned it in the formulas for the nerds that want to calculate their stuff when you're going to do that for all the stats. Our next pair is Endurance and Critical. So that means if we are stacking 1000, we already learned that we do not have 100% critical rate, we have 50%. But if the enemy is stacking 
stacking endurance, it will decrease our critical rate based on the enemy's endurance. So that means if enemies are building high endurance, you will have to build as much critical as possible and don't stop at like 50% or like 1000. You can get that to way higher numbers and you need to against endurance stacking enemies. But what actually is a critical in Throne and Liberty? Because it's different from many other games. So here on the example of the Queen Belandir's crossbow, we can see it has a damage range from 32 to 136. And if you are successfully critical striking, it will actually take the 136 as a bait for all farther damage calculations. So basically critical means that you're dealing max damage with a hit. Heavy attack, on the other hand, is what is usually known as critical in many other games where critical is doubling your damage. And here, the heavy attack is also classically doubling your damage at the end of the damage calculation. Now we're having a really interesting stat and that is bonus damage and again the counterpart damage reduction. Bonus damage works the way that if you're having one skill that is dealing a heavy burst like brutal incision for example and you have 10 bonus damage, it will add up for that single skill by 10. But if you on the other hand have a skill where you are hitting multiple times, the bonus damage will be applied on each hit that you're doing. So on Brutal Incision, we would only get a bonus of 10 and on Quickfire in this example, we would actually get a bonus damage of plus 30. So bonus damage is only viable to be stacked on classes that can have skills with multiple attack. And damage reduction, the counterpart, is basically reducing the damage in the same way as bonus damage is increasing it. Sides Evasion, another important stat, is actually resistances against certain CC abilities. Like for example, you are able to have the chance to build resistance against stun. So you're maybe more safe from like an attack from an assassin. But on the other hand, other people have also the option to build a chance to have a higher ability to stun. So similar to evasion and hit, you have to pair it out for your build. One thing that's especially important if you are building your own builds, you need to calculate the effective DPS for your skills to make sure that everything is fitting together with your gear. If you want to min max, I would say there is no way around this. And if you need some help with this, like it would take a whole probably fair 30, 40 minute video to actually explain how this is done. So if you need help, just contact me. I'm glad to help you. The game's proc system is quite unique. We do have a specific one that is like basically like the proc in almost any other game. It's called the shield block and it's unique to sword and shield. It will just have a certain chance at which you are blocking. And then we are having active blocks that are determined for example on the left side for the fury attack where you will see that yellow circle that is going close and then you will just have to stand still press your block button and you have um, taken no damage and if you're doing that perfect like in the perfect timing of the circle closing you will get a perfect dodge and that will allow you to reactivate your block skill to deal damage and then we are also having the other version and this is the wrath attack where you're having a square that is also getting smaller but here you're not able to stand while you want to block. You actually have to run and do a roll block. So that means the time that your iframes, iframe stands for invincible time basically, is on a rolling attack is way lower than on a standing block. So it's harder to perform. Badly, Throne of Liberty has the worst default settings in a game I have ever seen. And I am telling you, do not waste your time and play with those settings. Watch the guide that I'm planning in here. Link is in the description. Get the settings first correctly and then start playing the game. It will make your time 10 times more enjoyable. And of course, you will not waste like muscle memory for like things that you need to change later on anyways, because you're realizing it's not suitable in PvE, it's not suitable in PvP. Managing your inventory is essential. So I highly recommend to expand your inventory up to 150 and your storage as soon as you can, because this is the limit where it's costing only Solent and at 150 it's starting to cost Lucent. And obviously the more space you have in your inventory or storage, the easier it will be for you to hunt for longer times, not having to go back to sell and all of that. It will just increase your efficiency quite a bit. The game has one really cool feature and that is the temporary pouch. So let's say even though you have expanded your inventory, it's still full and you would go into a dungeon and you would actually lose your loot, the dungeon would close. That is not the case in Throne of Liberty. If you still have one space, you're opening a dungeon box, for example, the other loot will be saved in a temporary pouch and you can reclaim it later as soon as you've made again space in your inventory. Throne of Liberty has one setting, it's called Feuding Players, 
that is extremely important for PvP. When we are here in the settings on our target selection and we are picking priority for few players, that means players that you decide are your enemies, you will instantly get when you're pressing tab in PvP no matter how big of a clump is there. And that is really strong and I would highly recommend you taking care of that feuding list and maybe updating it before a GVG or like a mass PvP. And you do this by going to relations, to your feuds, start feud and here you can then enter the enemy's name in this game so it's easier to switch between weapons and skills different setups between pve farming dungeons pvp um you have quick slots that you can set here when you're going in your normal skill menu you can see like different setups that i'm running um one important thing that i have seen many streamers do is like they always go in that menu to change it no but you can actually change your quick slots in the skill bar as well so basically here on the bars here you can switch it the only limit that you have to switching is if one skill is on cooldown you will not be able to switch if it starts to rain you should go into territories where there is the least amount of people and keep your eyes open for marine ores because they spawn then if you have trouble while fishing to snap the fish you will go into your skills and remove the block that you usually have on your bar so the block is free because the block skill is the same skill that you need for fishing and if you then throw out your rod instead of having to time the snap and watch the fish you can actually just spam it. I'm just spamming it right now like an idiot. And suck, I will snap 100% of the time, every time. Before you're doing any life skills in Throne in Liberty, you always want to go to the oven and craft mastery bonus food. So that means like rye bread, if you do fishing, now before you start cooking, you want to have a quality pickled fruit candy up. And also those things last 30 minutes and it gathers materials. Some of them are daily limited. So if you are upgrading your cooking um, level, then also make sure that you have gathered lots of resources already so you can push those 30 minutes to the max. When you're visiting the auction house, you may be wondering, wait, there's so much food for sale? Why can I not sell mine? This is, you can only sell great successes in the auction house. So that means when you are crafting something, there's a certain percent chance that you will get twice the, the result and the additional result can be sold in the auction house for Lucent. So all life skills have actually a pretty decent value in the game. Life skills are actually really valuable and they are designed to farm end game weapons so for example at fishing you can get sex where you can see here you can get queen balandir for arch boss weapons like you can get lots of materials for crafting end game gear from the life skills so always do your dailies here also for the expeditions you can see right here the blue pouch is giving similar drops like the fishing where you can get queen balandir for your arch boss weapon while morphs don't have different speeds onto them, they're all the same, they do have one thing that you need to consider when choosing your morph. And that is for PvP, many different kind of morphs are used um, in the PvP action themselves, like going into a flying mode, running away from enemies, cap closing, all of that. And there's actually a difference in hitbox size from the morph. So for example, the puma right here will have a higher hitbox than the little bird. Another thing you should try to get your hands on as fast as possible is one of the turtles for the swimming morph because they actually have an effect that is allowing you to swim through lava without taking any damage and there's a couple of dungeons and open world where this is really useful there are sadly many false statements currently out there on how to level your morphs and get the bonus effects that you can see right here the misconception is that people think they are being leveled by using the morph a lot and that's not true it's actually a collection. So similar to um, army toys and stuff like this, you want to collect as many as possible. They have certain growth points added and those growth points will be put right here based on the morph that you're unlocking. In certain quests, you can unlock certain shapeshift. And for example, to finish your main storyline, you will have to fight one of the sandworms that are always going under if you approach them normally. And if you are shapeshifting into the spider, you can go and approach those sandworms and also if you are in an area with lots of spiders they will not attack you anymore so it's basically like a way to stay in an area where there's many aggros without getting attacked while you maybe want to wait for a mini boss or something like this
The fastest way to farm runes is by completing the challenge dimensional circle. Important to note here is that you're able to increase the tier by yourself and this will obviously give you higher rewards the higher you're going, but you also want to make sure that you're balancing out your farm speed. It's not always wise to farm like the highest tier that you're able to beat. You want to farm the highest tier that you're able to beat in a good time. So I highly recommend taking like a little sheet of paper, noting down what you're getting and how long it takes you to complete and balance it out. Also, you want to make sure that the runes are having the crate that you're currently looking for. So at um, one to five, you're having the white one, then you will go into the green ones. And currently the um, blue ones are the highest crate. You want to probably try to farm at least tier 11 to be effective. And then afterwards you want to optimize. The way the runes work and the runes are leveled is the game recognizes what crate of rune you have already gotten and then the next one will always be one level higher. So let's say, for example, I have a defensive rune for a ring that is level seven. So next time I kill a mob, I will then drop a level eight one, which also means that the level seven one here can just be dissolved. We have no further need for it and we can get the rune fragments out of there. And you are now finally able to unlock your rune slots and it comes to where to place which rune. You will go and look at your synergy list of what order of rune is giving you the best bonus. So I am, for example, looking for the perception and shield block penetration chance. So I would need an attack rune here in the middle. Let's see, maybe we are getting lucky. Oh, we did. <laughs> like, I didn't even do that like multiple times. That was just fucking streamer luck. Holy shit. <laughs> the rune system is surprisingly a good way to earn Lucent as a free to play player because you can craft rune hammer bundles with the rune fragments that you're getting and then sell them on the auction house right here. It's a pretty reliant source as a free to play player to get Lucent. You can fill up your substance transformation really easy by dissolving crafting materials and then dumping them in there. If you're doing substance transformation, the best thing is rolling for accessories only at the start. Cause there's this ring right here that then transcended magic ring that can usually only be dropped at Queen Belendir and that you can get from that way. It's a really rare drop. If you upgrade it to level 9, it is giving you 12 stats total, so 3 each. It's best in slot for many players and many builds so if that is best in slot make sure to roll only for accessories early when you're using the substance transformation always go to tier number five tier number five will give you the highest rewards and it's not worth it actually to do anything lower than that also you need to make sure to reach tier five exactly so if i'm putting that tier two in here that is like almost 3k points i would say and um if i would add another one here I would basically waste 2,800 points. So if I would now put like a blue one in, I'm only um, plus 36, like that is somewhat acceptable. You can also make it so you're feeding it directly by feeding in things that only give like one point. And yeah, just try to balance it out so you're paying the least amount here. The lithography system in Front of Liberty is giving you the ability to add gear that you maybe have double, don't need or whatever to turn it in for rewards. It's basically like a collection system. One of the best things that you can get there early is the Rustic Marvel Nature Rings, where you just craft like random green um, rings and you're now getting the Leaf of Fortune Ring, which is the best in slot ring for many builds early on and is really easy to be obtained even pre-level 50. Another option that you can do right here it's like going for the blue weapons, so you can have two blue weapons while you're leveling. This is really valuable. You will also be able to find like certain armor that you can get like maybe a second version of to trade, all of that. But make sure like the effort is worth it. And then we are having like the big value here. And this is um, from the purple ones, where you're turning in the purple gear and you're able to get trade conversion stones, trade extraction stones that helps you to farm Lucent as a free-to-play player and my favorite trade unlock stones, which is like really important to not be wasted. Use those that you're getting here really wisely and make sure to use them on stuff that is hard to get. Like for example, 
an arch boss weapon where you obviously don't want to buy three times in the codec under the collection you will find a collection of books and pages that are laying everywhere in the world and they actually serve a neat purpose especially for the people that like to have like well-designed characters because every time you collect one of those pages you will get ornamental points as you can see right here and in the cash shop instead of having to pay lucent you can actually use those ornamental coins to buy die and fret to change the looks of the customs that you have bought to make it more unique guardians are extremely valuable in the game and they are comparable to um, like an ultimate attack in other games that has like a long cooldown but can get you really good value those um, should be farmed for the build that you are playing as soon as it's possible and once you know what guardian you want you can go onto the eye here and it will tell you exactly how to unlock that one you should have power-ups running almost all the time and for certain options there's always different power-ups so for example if you're going pvp you will go pvp hit pvp critical option for example if you're doing like fighting a dungeon farming your daily dungeons then um, you will try to get something like this where you have boss hit here depending on what kind of boss it is you can get additional bonuses like if it's undead no? if it's a demon boss you can play with that if you're just farming like an open world dungeon then you will go with something like all hit for example or like critical hit critical damage or something that gives like skill damage boost just something that is good and helps you to aoe farm the game has a bunch of items that you need to purchase every day so if you're at the sundries merchant you will see you can buy 30 eggs every day. You can buy golden rye. Like everything that has a daily limit, you basically want to buy every day. This also includes the contract coin merchants, where like one of the best things that you need every day is like the fishing bait chest, the mystic keys right here. Then, you know, of course, if you're upgrading currently one of the parts, um, you can get that. And what you can also buy daily is like stuff like precious blessing pouch or the pouch which can give you um, also new contracts to farm more contract coins for example then at the guild merchant you also have daily purchases of course if you're doing queen balandir you want to get your venom but other than that precious polish crystal if you're in a crafting that you should buy every day um, i personally prefer to bear to buy the rare recovery crystals because this is currently like the best healing and i like to have them for pvp and this is also the source where you can get mana region potions similar to the daily purchase there's also weekly purchases so again at the sundries merchant we can buy um content Contracts to farm more contract coins at the guild merchant we are having for example the trade conversion stones with a weekly limit which are really valuable and you should probably be getting and also at the contract coin merchant you have weeklies that you should get trade extraction stone will help you to farm more lucent with the auction house rune hammers um, are a really good source here because you also need to make sure those rune hammers cannot be sold in the auction house while the ones that you go from the rune fragments can so those are the ones that you want to use for your own gear and the other ones are those that you maybe want to sell if you're a free-to-play player also here you are able to get the ink and that ink you should um, buy like almost every week because with that ink you're then able to craft glitter crafts right here in this function and this will allow you for example you're having an item that is worth a lot but you got like a really bad trade on it so you're turning it into a little craft and then you recraft it uh, you maybe get a good trade so you can basically re-roll trades that way and the other option is that you can sell the litter crafts then in the auction house for lucent every day you have the option to stay locked in for three hours to get additional reward from the daily lock-in rewards i highly recommend doing this especially that you're having more dungeon runs by doing this it's like extremely valuable and you do not have to do anything so basically if you're afk for three hours this is also fine there's lots of hearts you see in the game and there's a couple ways to counter that and one is the purification remedy that you can craft right here that is being consumed but removes a cc spell another option to remove cc is by crafting the precious purification stone at the sun trees crafting you see you will need lots of jewels here but once you have crafted that stone it will not be consumed so you can remove a cc 
two main cooldowns, stone is not consumed, you can use it as many times as you want. When you're playing the game, participating in the event schedule is essential. And to not miss any, please use the notification settings here and make sure that you're getting alerts prior to events starting. So you always can like, for example, in those events, you're not like two minutes late and have no chance anymore for rank one. So make sure that all of your alerts are up to date for the content that you want to farm. Being part of a guild is essential in this game. Not only can you get additional rewards for everyone in your team that is completing um, open world events, you can also get rewards if you're doing guild contracts, for example, under this tab right here. Guilds will have the ability to unlock skills for their members to get like additional value, like more, um, like more Solan, for example. And Obviously, if you want to do PvP, you want to do all the content like Boonstone, Riftstone, Guild is a must. You can basically not PvP without a Guild in this game unless you only want to run Arena. Also, for the PvEers, a Guild is really valuable because the Guild itself, if you're in the Guild base, in this portal here, you will get access to Guild only raid and bosses here that you can do every week. If you're playing PvP, it's important to mark your shot callers in mass PvP so everyone knows like that's the tank that the whole guild is following. So use the over the head symbols for this. We are looking at the masteries of the game. So I'm having a crossbow, I'm having a dagger and only the mastery is active of the weapon that you're wearing in your main hand. So for me, I'm currently wearing my crossbow as the main hand. So I will only have my crossbow masteries up but if i'm using a dagger skill my dagger masteries will apply while using that skill there is actually a hidden cap in the game and that is 40 meters of range you cannot go over that it does not matter what it says in your character description you are ninja capped here when you are playing pvp you never want to attack like this like stationary you always want to be moving and of course you can use your movement skills but also you can kite and keep pressing spacebar. This will give you many advantages in PvP. When you are equipping Stellarite, most people just go right click and equip it. This only equips it to your main weapon. So like I changed weapon and you will see now here, Stellarite is not equipped. So I actually have to equip it again on my other weapon and now when i'm switching you will see here now the stellar right is there don't do that mistake i think many people did this without even noticing they are losing the damage arena seasons finally started and you can get a bunch of rewards here even if you're basically almost not playing you will also get free arena coins that you can use in the arena shop even if you're not a pvp player get those coins no? and if you are a pvp player of course try to climb the ladder get as many points as possible tip number 101 get a loyal friend like lumi that is always supporting you while you're playing with like being nice asking for attention maybe pooping in the middle of the living room while you're doing a dungeon all the great things